Some noses are considered pretty, some noses are considered ugly. The nose is in the middle of your face and can make or break your attractiveness. We use contouring or get a nose job, which is promoted all over social media. Oh my god. Oh my god. These days, we are bombarded with before and after photos of plastic surgery. Plastic surgeons have massive followings on social media. Influencers and celebrities get nose jobs and beauty brands and the media prefer to showcase perfect noses in general. The nose, the organ right in the center of our face, can change the way you look and how others perceive you, if you are considered beautiful or not. Let's first take a look at the history of rhinoplasty. The German doctor Jacques Joseph is one of the first pioneers of rhinoplasty. Until 1889 he studied medicine in Berlin. In 1904 he published his first report on the correction of the hump nose of the front nasal septum. Another one of the first plastic surgeons in the late 1890s was Charles Conrad Miller from Chicago. Under the influence of anti-Semitism, hawk noses were not very desirable, so changing the nose was also about improving social status at the time. In times of war and terror, cutting off noses and ears were and are common. Aisha Muhammad Zai is a woman from Afghanistan who fled from her husband, a Taliban fighter. She was forced to marry him as a 12-year-old, but was then jailed and left to die. They cut off her nose and ears. She was later rescued and now lives in the US. Many soldiers who got injured also got plastic surgery to reconstruct their faces. Nowadays, plastic surgery is popular mostly because of beauty standards. Our nose, just like many of our body parts, has a function. An important function, it's not there to look beautiful. One purpose of the nose is to condition inhaled air so that it is warm and moist. The narrow nostrils seem to alter the airflow so that the inside of the nose can humidify and warm the air more efficiently. Also, the shape of someone's nose was formed by a long process of adaptation to our local climate. Long and thin noses occurred in dry, cold areas, while short and wide noses occurred in hot, humid areas. Iran, by the way, has the highest rate of rhinoplasty, and rhinoplasties are often done in Turkey, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Lithuania, and Poland. In Turkey, it costs around 3,000 euros, apparently including um, traveling and accommodation. In the US, it is 3,000 up to 15,000 dollars. Still, a nose job is surgery and complications can occur. Leila, for example, got a nose job in Turkey and died. Some people also react to the anesthetic and die. One month ago I got a nose job. Then my skin was leaking. I was allergic to the tape. Some people get a nose job not for changing the shape of their nose necessarily, but for improving the ability to breathe, so they have some sort of nasal congestion. If you are on TikTok, you've heard of a deviated septum and people saying you can get a free nose job with it. If you're wondering whether or not you have a deviated septum, you might want to stick around. I live in Ontario, Canada, and I was able to get a septoplasty for free. Now, I have always had really bad allergies and always generally am congested. I didn't really think much of it for years because I just assumed it was allergies and there wasn't much I can do about it. Ashley Tussell said she had a deviated septum. I quote, after several doctor's visits about my health issues, they also suggested shaving my bump down. I was young and didn't put much thought into it, so I decided why not. It wasn't a big deal to me, nor was it like I was dreaming of the day I'd get a nose job. On the other hand, I have zero judgment towards anyone who does look forward to that day. Your body, your choice. You might remember that during the Debbie Heard trial, it was announced that Amber Heard has one of the most beautiful faces in the world, according to science and the Greek golden ratio. De Silva used computerized face mapping technology to back up his findings and place Heard near the top of the scale. The golden ratio originates from the European Renaissance. The golden phi ratio is a mathematical ratio that seems to appear recurrently in beautiful things in nature as well as in other things that are seen as beautiful. The magic ratio is 1 to 1.618. Applied to the face, the ratio of the nose to the top lip is less than the distance from lip to chin, for example. 
Using a caliper, you can measure patient's ratio and apply filters, for example, to emphasize certain points on the face that colorate to beauty. In a recent article with the World Stock Exchange, GDS calculated that Amber Heard is the one that comes the closest to the principles of physical perfection. The ideal female nose is turned up at 106 degrees, so for example, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Beckinsale and Jessica Biel have perfect noses. They use digital portraits of young white women aged 18 to 25 years, which were ranked online by almost 4,000 men and women drawn from the same age group. Measured from the lip up, the optimum angle of rotation at the nasal tip, so the amount the nose is turned up, should be 106 degrees to enhance a woman's looks, says this research. A nose that is rotated less than 90 degrees to the face looks droopy and long and masculine. US plastic surgeons behind the research claim there has been no universally accepted standard that defines the most aesthetic combination of nasal features until now. And also, the noses of Meghan Markle, Jessica Alba and Kate Middleton are among the most requested celebrity noses, so when people go to doctors and they say, hey, this is the nose that I want, those are the noses. One example of a super drastic change is Lily Ponce, a Venezuelan-born American YouTuber. Some may argue that she wouldn't have this following without her plastic surgery and nose job because we are all very shallow and superficial and because her nose before was not considered beautiful at all. She looks like a completely different person. There are many voices pointing out that the extreme preference of a nose shape that mostly white women have is connected to racism. Many say that nose shapes uh, that are looked down on are usually associated with people who are Jewish, Black, Asian or belong to another ethnic minority. That is um, part of the Eurocentric beauty ideal. Of course, white women can have um, those nose shapes and also get to experience the disadvantages. There is also research on that. Um, this is the chapter Why Race is Not a Biological Concept in the book Race and Racism in Theory and Practice. Here is one example of how women perceive the beauty standard regarding the nose. In theory, simply a physiological necessary, but in practice a commodified matter of symbolic beauty and power. As a woman, I am taught to scrutinize every curve, edge and line on my body, and if I don't, someone else will. So, in an age where each wrinkle and blemish uh, come under scrutiny, I do not believe it is a frivolous niche for the nose to be culturally spotlighted. My heritage is Arab Latina and my first memory of insecurity came as a young teenager, explaining my side profile and questioning why I didn't look like the majority of my friends. Growing up in a very white, very British area often meant that my comparison pool was not extensive. As a teenager, body insecurity tore through my self-esteem and my nose became the focus of intense self-critique. I am white passing and skin color, but my features are distinctly Arab. It should always be your body your choice. Anyone can make their own decisions. But of course, changing the most prominent feature in your face and risking your life and health shouldn't be due to beauty standards that are forced upon you. Those more unique noses can look very beautiful if we look at Ruby Kaur. Um, this nose shape, not turned up but downwards, looks very beautiful on her. We can also see these cultural impacts with Gigi and Bella Hadid. Their mother, Yolanda Hadid, is Dutch and Mohammed Hadid is born in Israel and Jordanian. Gigi Hadid was born with a nose more similar to her mother's and Bella Hadid had a nose job because hers looked like her father's. Yolanda also always, Yolanda also always pointed out their differences. Yolanda refers to Bella and Gigi as the black swan and the white swan. She continues, when somebody's looking for a brunette with blue eyes, Gigi's not going to get the job. If they're looking for an all-American girl, they're not going to hire Bella. In an interview with Vogue, Bella admitted, I wish I had kept the nose of my ancestors. I think I would have grown into it. So this is also something some people do regret getting a nose job because they were pressured into it. There are many critics that say TikTok doesn't really filter any content of plastic surgeons and plastic surgeons in particular can benefit from visual based platforms and are forerunners among physicians. The adoption of social media. Some plastic surgeons even are even recognized as social media influencers. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No way. Mm. I don't know. Don't look this way. Oh my god, I'm not gonna look. 
Oh, oh my god. The British network ITV did a small experiment and created a TikTok account as a 14 year old girl. On the For You page, within 15 minutes, three videos promoting lip fillers, breast augmentation and rhinoplasty were suggested to the account. The app bans this content in theory, but it's all over TikTok and plastic surgeons have a massive following of millions of people. And they even do add videos to tell girls what they can improve in their faces or bodies. Social media is very influential on young people on so many levels. It affects their confidence, image, language and more. So presenting them with lots of cosmetic surgery videos will normalize the practice. We also know a lot of surgeons use predatory techniques when promoting their work on social media. They weaponize mental health and say the operations will solve your problems and make you feel better. They also mentioned some comments of teenagers like, can you tell me what the price would be? I really want to save up or this is the exact nose that I want. And they both were minors. The rise of interest in the procedure is only heightened by the media's portrayal of rhinoplasty, especially towards teenagers. The hashtag nosejobcheck on TikTok has become a viral trend. We already talked about deviated septums and breathing issues. Someone who has many young fans also showed her nose job journey on TikTok and that is Charlie D'Amelio and her sister Dixie as well. Besides surgery, you can also fix your nose with only fillers, which is cheaper, but when you get a bump removed, the filler is in between your eyes and that is quite risky. These days we are really bombarded with before and after pictures. It seems like plastic surgeons are taking over social media and social media has definitely boosted this business, just like any other appearance um, related industry. Of course, filters on Snapchat, Instagram or TikTok also make many people want to change their features and videos without any beauty filter are super rare these days and yeah, just as unedited pictures on Instagram. Many influencers look like the same person, all edited via Facetune and many apps also allow you to make your nose um, bridge smaller, the nose longer or shorter. There are also just so many trends on TikTok where people compare their nose to other noses or where they have a filter and they kind of compare if their nose could look better and everyone is showing off their side profile making other people insecure because they can't go stargazing with someone and they would look at a beautiful side profile it is kind of toxic So of course this normalization of nose jobs on a platform for teenagers can have a huge impact on society. Um, faces also change so much when you grow up and you might desperately want a nose job even if your nose is totally fine and your facial, facial features are getting more defined anyway. So your nose ends up looking a bit smaller and thinner when you are older. Um, there are also TikToks with people getting nose jobs where everyone in the comments agrees that the nose before looked so much better which doesn't help because at that point it's too late to go back. And it also doesn't matter, the person who got surgery must like it and no one else. But still, we are bullying people into changing a lot, not only noses, but other body parts and features. So these trends that more and more teens want a nose job, it's a reflection of our Eurocentric beauty standards, but beauty standards in general, and of the way the media and fashion industry and beauty industry chooses their models and those people they think are worth showing to the public and those who are not good enough. I hope you found this video insightful. After that, you can learn to see the beauty in your unique features, hopefully. If you want to see other videos in the series about media and society, feel free to subscribe and share your opinion or experience on rhinoplasty in the comments, as well as any suggestion for other topics. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week.